Welcome to Atlanta Live. We are those Baxter. I'm Juan. And I am Kayla. And we love to encourage people. We love Jesus. And we love to live our marriage out loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we love to play that incredible new music, that gospel music on the radio. Yes, show. we do. And guess what? We love to be television hosts now right <laughs> here on Atlanta Live. Amen. Because we love to inspire, to, to take, take you higher. higher. Ooh. Come yeah, on, baby. Come on, baby. Who we, we we're gonna tonight? We're going to have a good time tonight. We, we have some of our friends, our favorite married what? couple. Talk about that it. That is Billy and Darlene Bird. And you're going to hear about their incredible what? love story. The love bird. Yes. And we have author and talk show host Natasha Oquindo. Yeah. Ooh, oh, honey, yes. she is going to talk to y'all. Oh, about yes. It. And we got the musical gift, we got the musical talents of our brother, yes. Billy. Bradley Jr. in Heart of Worship, right? And his first song is Be Glorified. Come on, if you know the Lord has been good to you. Yeah. Let's see you clap your hands. Bye. 
Amen. Amen. <laughs> Billy Bradley Jr. and Heart of Worship Come with on. Yeah. Be Glorified. Yeah. I felt that. Yes, Amen. Sir. They just kept saying, be magnified, and the songs, be glorified, hey, and we you, do that hey, all together. All we together just magnify one. him and glorify his name. Amen. Now, amen. Now, who we got with us right now? Oh, y'all, I'm telling you, you are in for a treat. Yes. We are in for a treat every time we spend time with our good friends, the Lovebirds. Yes. Y'all, yes. we have Darlene and Billy Bird here tonight. Yes. Hey, guys. Thank, hey, you. Thank, you. Hey, for hey. Thank you for having us. We're so excited to be here Absolutely. Uh, and to share with you guys our friends. I know, you know, we share the same uh, passion for relationship vitality. Yes. So when we get together, it's just all good. So and thank you guys for having us. We also share the same us. passion for God, too. I Amen. love that Absolutely. part. Amen. Absolutely. Me and Billy run us. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Me and Kayla let them think they do. <laughs> Amen. But it's awesome. Yes. <laughs> so tonight, um, so... We said that they are friends. Like, yeah. we go over each other's houses. Yeah. We, have, we spend time together. We're, yes. We were attracted to your love for yes. each other, your love for people, yes. um, and you sharing your, your love. So we as a couple, we admire your love and mm -hmm. your love Thank story. You. And you have a mission to your love. Yeah, absolutely. You know, can you talk to us about the mission that Ooh. God has put you on Ooh. for your love story? Mm -hmm. I think I'll start with this one because the mission actually starts with me and what I was hearing from God. Mm -hmm. um, the mission actually started when I first met Darlene. It was at a, an, a, a, uh, an event that we were attending. Some people from up uh, in Chester, Chester, PA, make a shout out to Ooh. Chester, PA, X is six. <laughs> uh, they get together here in Atlanta. They are from all from up there. And I saw Darlene one time, and I, I, from that moment, I just knew that she was the one. I wish wow. she was the one. And uh, there was this pursuit for her because she fell off the radar for quite a while. Mm. And uh, I was blowing up her friend's telephone and telling her to make sure she makes the next event and where is she at? You think she's going to show up? And, uh, but that's how the actual love birth story starts. Yeah, it's incredible because we're from the same hometown, right. uh -huh. Chester, PA. But we met here. Oh, wow. And people find it fascinating that we didn't know each other. I know all his friends. Yep. He knows all my friends, but we didn't know each other in school. Absolutely. And then even in school and kind of after school, uh, we kind of walked different paths. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, just, yes. let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, we, you know, kind of walked different paths. And, and then I always kind of was like, Darlene was doing the right thing and in the right place and being mm -hmm. a good girl and handling business and just, just focus, 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 focus. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, our paths didn't cross a lot. We mm. actually met here. But when people said, you know, Billy Bird is blowing me up and he wants to make sure you're coming <laughs> to the party. And, he, and I'm like, who are you talking about? Right, right. right. Help me understand who, you, who you're even talking about. And I was like, oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. When he comes in, it's like the light of the part, life of the party. Absolutely. Oh, it's time to, oh, no, thank you. I'm okay. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And I'm going to say the class clown, Absolutely. right? He was a year class apart. clown. And it's married to the class president. And I was class president. president. Yes. Wow. A year apart in high school. Though. Yeah. But we yeah. never walked the same halls of the same high school, Chester High School, but never knew each other. Yeah. People find that amazing. Yeah. That we were both very popular for very different reasons. Yeah. Wow. You know, of course, she was in the classroom right. doing her work. I was in the hallways right. running around. Right. Sound familiar. Sound familiar. <laughs> so, you know, so, so, I, and I'm saying this is not going to work. Yeah. This is just not going to work. You know, mm -hmm. we live two different lives, two different paths. You've done everything that I've never done, mm -hmm. you've done all of that. Right, right, right. You know, so this yes. isn't going to work. So <laughs> he's like, you're not even going to give me a chance. And I was like, I just don't have any more lifetime to waste. I've wasted yeah. a lot of my mm. life. I'm good where I am now. I don't do drama. And I just don't see this, how this could work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And so you're not, I said, you know what? He pestered. Well, what did you call it? Pursued. Pursuing. <laughs> and I said, you know I what? You know what? Effect. You got, I can give you one hour. And I, you know, I was into time management and training. You, I can give you one hour. Wow. We can get this done in one hour. He said that. So he came and picked me up. I'm here for my hour, get in the car. And I'm like, I'm cold. Like, you know, don't touch me. You know, I'm not uh, your girl. Don't take my picture. Um, and he <laughs> takes me, you know, he comes back the next day, knocks on the door and says, 
I'm here for my hour. I'm like, what? wait a minute. That was one hour, one day. Yeah. One hour, one day. He comes back the next day. I'm like, okay, I'm starting to feel like you're a stalker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every day, for almost 40 days, yes. he knocked on the door and said, I'm here for my time. I and I'd take her and, for an ice cream or I would take her, you know, Crab Lake Tuesday was over this spot. And, yeah. But I was, you know, of course, he trying to find out more about yeah. Darlene and who she was. She was just very intriguing to me. And, you know, the truth of this matter is, I'd ask God, and God said, I could have Darlene. Ooh. He gave you a vision, too, though. Absolutely. Tell us about the vision he that he did. gave you. And I said, wait, I talk to the man every day. The man ain't said nothing to me. So <laughs> I think you're talking that, that talk. So I took but... Darlene to the beach one day. Yeah. I'd heard her say she hadn't been to the beach, and it's the summer is in, I hadn't put my sand in the toes, I mean, my toes in the sand. So I got up one Saturday morning for my hour, knocked on the door, and said, get in the car. Got her in the car. I had a bag packed, the beach stuff and the picnic stuff, and I took her to the beach. And when we got to the beach, I opened up the door. I literally drove up on the beach and told her to stick her toes in the sand. And at that moment, we got out, and of course, I took her out in the water, and then God gave me this vision mm -hmm. of what our love would be like and what it would look like mm -hmm. and how people would be inspired and encouraged because of our love. And it was just, she calls it the beach speech at the beach. <laughs> Yeah. At the I, end of the speech. I wasn't ready because I'm still being cold and I'm icy and everything. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not your girl. And like so girl. she said, she said, and she was like, I wasn't ready. she was like, that was a nice speech. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, I but, joked with him about it being yeah, our Easter speech. But he gave me a vision of, you know, our love being so true and so real and so significant. It would inspire people. And I told her, as far as this water goes, our love story would go across the water. Ooh. It would be in different countries. People would hear about it. Hence, we're here now on yeah. Atlanta Live. Yeah. And God is fulfilling his promises yeah. for, about that for me. And so we were married in eight months, but none, nevertheless. <laughs> <Seven million. laughs> yeah. But nevertheless, yeah. let me. I, th I think the thing because you know and he always says thank you for not running, mm -hmm. because listen, my family wasn't hearing it, my children wasn't here, my friends like no no no, we hear about a bunch of stories about him, mm -hmm. all of them are true, still here, and we still just here. don't. I'm still finding out <laughs> that this class clown did. Uh, you did what? Thank God for delivering but, this Yeah, <laughs> but he tells me all the time, thank God, thank you for not running, because I promised my kids, I said, listen, I know it sounds crazy, but you know, I know how to hear from God. And if God says run, I can just promise you that I will run. Mm. And so what got me was the mission that he painted about what our love and our relationship could do, mm. what it could be, what we could be, together. Yeah. So while I'm hard and I'm icy and I'm stoned, I'm hearing that and it made my antenna go up. So because he, he, he project, it was so clear, the vision that he had. No, 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 we're not going to survive this. We're going to thrive. I promise I will keep a pulse on it. People, we're going to inspire people. We're going to make people believe in love again. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I'm going to give you every ounce of love in my heart. I'm not going to hold back any of it. And so as he was Painting the picture, I could see the vision. Yeah. And I could see myself in the vision. Ooh. I've always believed in love. Yeah. I've always felt that I had all that it takes to be a good, a good wife. Mm -hmm. So I, it was a compelling vision. And I would say this, women, I don't think women have a problem with submission. Mm -hmm. Submission means get under the mission. Mm. The mission. The mission. And the mission was what he told The you. problem is, they are not often presented a mission that they can get under come and on, see themselves in and help it come yeah. to light. Amen. But he had a, a mission of what our marriage and our love could do, what it could be. And mm -hmm. that's what, what got my attention. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of things had to happen. He changed in front of my eyes. Yeah. A lot of those old habits mm -hmm. oh. began to fall off. Yes. And I made it clear, if you're not done, you're not done. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I can just say what I'm going to have in my life and what I'm not. And, yeah. and then, you know, my HR background, I'm presenting when he's talking like this husband stuff, I'm like, like, Darlene's husband? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I had a whole job description. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can find it in the book, The mm -hmm. Love Bird mm -hmm. Story, okay, yeah. how the class like, clown I'll... and the class president yes. developed an extraordinary <laughs> love. <laughs> and all I can that. say is, yeah. this mm -hmm. is kind of the job description for Darlene's husband. Mm -hmm. He said, I never wanted a job more in my life. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I never want a job more in my life. Mm -hmm. And he changed in front of my eyes. And God is funny, because he'll sometimes orchestrate situations yeah. that cause you to see things that you haven't seen. Yeah. And I did, I got sick. My mm -hmm. sciatic nerve flared up. And I had to almost have emergencies. And this was during our dating time. Oh, wow. So he said, can I go to church with you? What are you doing Sunday? I said, oh, I go to church on Sunday. I just do. <laughs> he said, I would love to go to church with you. And I'm like, oof. Because right. I'm a worshiper. Right, Listen, right. I'm crying, I'm praising. Uh, you kind of, yo, you know what I mean? <laughs> he says, but then I felt bad. I'm like, you really shouldn't tell anybody down who wants to go to church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but he could tell I was hurting and I was in pain. Mm -hmm. After church, he took me right to the hospital, mm. right to the emergency ward, and handled the doctors, nurses, everything. He had to take me home, put me in bed, get me undressed, and mm -hmm. you know, and all the time I'm like, I'm cold. Like you ain't, yeah, you ain't not, touching me, why you right? Mm -hmm. touching me. He, you know, he had my medicine. Okay, I'm, I need you to eat some bread or get something in your mm -hmm. stomach. It's like you got another 30 minutes. I'm gonna give you the medicine. He was handling things. I heard the dishwasher going, and the, <laughs> and the, I was like, I leaned to the side of the bed and was like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Right. Huh? So God showed me something I'd never seen. I've never been taken care of. Mm, I've yeah. been the caregiver. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but. God showed me something in him that I had never seen before. I love when she tells this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Because, you know, I don't see myself. I just see, I just see myself doing what God was telling me. Yeah, yeah. I don't see myself acting this out because in my right mind, I mean, in, in my mind at that time, I'm really searching. I'm going to give you a good example of this. <laughs> After I was married to Darlene, <clears throat> about six months, excuse me. I'm driving down the highway, I'm coming home, I'm working, I'm working at the airport, and I'm uh, driving home, I'm spending my time right. with God, praying, all that kind of good stuff, and all of a sudden it hit me. I was married to Darlene. Wow. And I mean, I, re I had an anxiety attack. And I, th th my, my exact words were, God, what am I supposed to do? And everything got quiet, it seems like I wasn't even in the car anymore. Yeah. And I heard this voice say to me, you take care of Darlene, and I'll take care of the rest. Come yeah. on, Jesus. Ooh, man, I'm coming. As I'm coming home, one, that's the job I wanted. Right. I'm coming home. I'm driving. I'm crying. But I'm laughing at the same time. Rejoicing. And it's uncontrollable. I'm rejoicing. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, rejoicing. Yeah, it was yeah. just an amazing experience. You take care of Darlene, and I'll take care of the rest. Hey, you and know what? Me, yeah. can I, let me say something, because, because y'all love story always inspires us, right? For real, for, for real. real. So, yeah. But now, OK, we, we saw the first book. Now y'all just got a second book that just yeah. came out, right? Yes. And Hot what, is off the the purpose? Press. what is the purpose of the second book? Because we want people to understand what the second book is. OK, about. Yes. so God is saying, and it's been great. Our love story has been great. We enjoyed writing it. And people were like, you guys need to write mm -hmm. this story. So mm -hmm. we've written it. We, need we went through the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we so enjoyed writing the process that for, for this new phase, for what mm -hmm. God is doing in our lives. It's, it's not about our love story. It's about the mission mm -hmm. and inspiring. Our mission is to inspire, to right. encourage, and, and ignite, ignite true mm -hmm. love and true relationships. He's like, we're going to make people believe in love again. We're bringing back real love. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So the new book, The Best Love Story, the one we write together, encourages couples to invest the time to sit down and write your love story, oh, wow. your unique love story. We believe mm -hmm. they all should be unique and should be treasured and they're all valuable. But you may write it down and make a keepsake of it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Both sides of the story, because you know there's two sides to every story. Right. So there's prompts in there to uh, give us conversation starters to right. get yeah. you to begin to start talk about your love story. Yeah. When was the first kiss? Who uh, who, who, who supported you? Who yeah. didn't support oh, right, you? Right. Yeah. So there's a the lot of turning points in your questions. relationship. Yeah. And then when at the did end, you know that this yes. was the one? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. all of those questions. You write it down and you'll have it as a treasure keepsake. Exactly. So that's mm -hmm. the second book. That's the second book. Yeah. So and and even when things get a little rocky. I'm about to say so let them know how they can find us. How they can find us? Uh, yes. Okay. We can find, you can find us at love-birds.com. That's, yes. that's our website. We're also on Facebook and yeah. Your Love Birds and The Love Birds Story. And Love have Birds. A podcast. We have a podcast called Conversations, Conversations with the Love Birds. With the Love Birds. It comes on, on Feel, Good, Feel Talk. Good Talk on Facebook. We mm -hmm. go every other Wednesday at 8.30 yeah. p.m. Yeah. Uh, Where we yeah. just share on our yeah. podcast. We're just transparent about what we're doing. And what we're talking about. What, what we've been what talking about. about. Some of the things that we've done to build a foundation. There's tips and strategies in our book, mm -hmm. in our 
story. People okay. say you got to read that book with a highlighter because yeah. it's giving you tips and strategies and things to do and assessments for your relationship. Ooh, well, and we thank y'all. Yes. And uh, we, we love can't wait to spend it. more time with yes. you all. Yes. And we got some. Up next, we got this. Billy Bradley and Heart of Worship with One Love, One God right here. Amen. <laughs>
One God, all we need you. All that was so good. Yes, I'm yes. telling you. I, I don't know if you were worshiping. I, I know I, you I'm were worshiping. I was about to say, listen. I know I, I was worshiping. I had to stay I in my y'all seat. were worshiping. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I got I can raise my uh, hands, but I wanted to jump up, but I was like, Beautiful like music, city. beautiful Ooh. voice. Like, I started singing along with it. So, oh, <laughs> like, with the song. song. That's, that's a good song, good y'all. Songs I did. And I know that Natasha. You were singing along with us too, Oquindo, oh. Natasha Oquindo. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes. It is a blessing to have you here tonight on Atlanta Live. I, I already saw the worship that's in you. Yes, Lord. Amen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you have a brand new book. Mm -hmm. And the book is Invitation to Queendom, Seven Keys to Unlock Your God-Given Superpower. Yes. Come on, because our power <laughs> yes. comes from the Lord. Yes. yes. So we're excited about that. And I also read that you affect change and bring transformation yes, to people. Good. Please talk to us Thank about you. your book. Talk to us about what <laughs> yes. you're doing. Well, first and foremost, the book was birthed out of me just going through the process, right? And especially the time we're in now where people are kind of not just understanding the process, mm -hmm. trying to come away from church. And so I want to enlighten people during the process, especially women, um, going through that process, not to abort the process, mm -hmm. but to get to the place where you are in the queendom. And I call it queendom simply just our position as women in the kingdom of God. Just a little catchphrase. Yes. Um, but to get to that place of power and where you're really navigating in a healthy way, to not abort that process, to understand those steps that, that God takes you through. How do um, we get there? <laughs> I want to know. Look, look, you like, know first, listen, what's the well, steps? Well, first and foremost, I talk about the way God views us as women. I think a lot of times we don't understand that through all of the noise. Yes. Right. That's going on. And women being looked at as the law of the totem pole or being, you know, the last thing looked at. But God sees us in a totally different light. I talk about in the beginning with Adam and Eve, how when God spoke to both of them when they were in spirit form and he gave them dominion and gave them the promises. Mm -hmm. And so I do believe that God has taken us back to that place as we get to that place spiritually. But a lot of women don't know that God is even concerned about them. When I was writing the book, um, my book coach and the editor, they literally got a breakthrough editing the book. She said, I didn't even know God cared and I almost cried. And that, that broke something in me. I said, no, God cares yeah. about us as women. He's concerned. And I said, he even views us. He has placed a value on us that we don't acknowledge or even know that we are to walk in. He sees us as a jewel. When I talk about it in chapter one, um, but when you see the woman, it's almost queenly. She's presented to the man. She's ushered in after everything is already prepared, right? Yeah. He's worked the ground. He's, you know, put everything in place. And then God ushers her in as if she's a queen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Everything's already prepared for her and laid yeah. out. And so that is a place that I believe us as women need to walk in, in a prepared place. Mm. Come if on. we get to the place we need to in God, believe in him to the level, then everything we walk in will already be prepared for us. Wow. That was the beginning. And so I do believe that it was time to, it was birth out of me trying to actually do a conference. I was going to put a conference together for women and kept getting all these roadblocks. And I'm like, Lord, what is going <laughs> on? You know, I'm a foot people I had right, doing right. stuff, everything was shut. And I said, God, what is this? He said, I need you to write this book first. Wow. And literally shut my life down for a year. And when I say everything happened while I, I three, I, about three deaths, three funerals, you know, that year, one of my twin daughters had to have uh, emergency surgery. Wow. Her, gall, her gallbladder almost erupted. I mean, just coming into that. And I said, God, how am I supposed to write this in the midst of this? Right, right. But 
he, he was letting me know that the positive and the negative is what produced power, Natasha. Mm -hmm. He said, the positive is what I've given you to do and me inside of you. And the negative that's going on around you is going to make the words in this book powerful. Okay. And so that's why I say bringing transformation and things of that nature, because it was birthed out of going through hardships, but as a good soldier, mm -hmm. as a good soldier, and it can be done. God is faithful. And so I, I'm just blessed with the project, actually. Everybody that touches it, that reads it, they're getting something from it. I mean, getting out of abusive relationships. I mean, mm -hmm. all type of uh, results that are coming from it. So I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even just knowing that God has prepared a place for us, mm -hmm. you know, as we walk in and see that we are uh, already, it's prepared for us when we get there. Right. Yeah. Right. That's you think true. about it, it was prepared. The Garden of Eden was already prepared. And then the woman came in and she was, all she was to do was to really help him meet the standard of God, help him, you know, mm -hmm. please God. And so that's what we're still doing, but we're having to get our mindset back to that place because the world has fed us all of these different things to where we think we're not enough, right. not enough surgery. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And, and the standard yeah. for women is changing mm -hmm. the as the trend. Are. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. changing. Mm -hmm. No longer are you viewed as valuable if you are natural and, and you know, yeah, just yeah. wearing your natural hair, your natural, you know, who you are without the right. surgeries and stuff. And so the standard is changing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, go back to what God has said about us right. and move from there. That is going to sustain us and give us the level of confidence that we need to not only um, navigate in this life, but to answer the call of God, mm. to answer the call of God. So that's why I say seven keys to unlock your God-given superpower. The yeah. superpower is God. He's super. Mm -hmm. He's all over the place, right? Yeah. But we need his power to what? Fulfill the mission, mm -hmm. as you stated. I, I paid attention because I talk about it. <laughs> talk about I talk about mission. submission yeah, yeah, yeah. in um, chapter mm -hmm. seven in the last chapter. Mm -hmm. A lot of us run from that, but it's a powerful thing. Yeah. It's a powerful thing, and it doesn't even mean what we think. We're fearful mm -hmm. of it, but submission, like they said, is going up under the mission yeah. and moving in the mission if you have a spouse, but you think about it. God is our spouse. There's a mission there, too. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And even when we see the marriage, because it's a preparation for those who are single as well, the book, yes. um, Single Women, but once you understand it, then once you move forward in it, then God can be glorified in it. And what he joined together, nobody can put asunder. But I think it's an understanding of everything that God is requiring. Mm -hmm. All it is is an understanding. Once we understand, we can move. He said, in all of our getting, get understanding. Yes. Yeah. Right? And once I understood submission, hey, I'm like, look, sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> sign me hey, up. I was about to say, because um, I know in the back we talked about seasons, right? Right. And being in different seasons. So what season are, we, are you in right now? Well, me, I'm in a season of being repositioned by God. Mm -hmm. um, and in that reposition, it was like this transition and it was rough mm -hmm. because I was so used to just standing flat foot preaching. Right. Mm -hmm. And and when God began to call me uh, to the marketplace, mm -hmm. uh, it, I felt like Peter. I can just be real. I felt like Peter. I'm like, look, all I know at this point is Christ and him crucified. I, I don't want <laughs> nothing unclean. <laughs> right, right. But, but he began to put me in situations where I was around more people who needed to hear the gospel and not only hear the gospel, but see the example. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing that he's been giving me to be the representation. The right. Application. If I don't yeah. get to preach and say Jesus, mm -hmm. they get to see me navigate. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And yes. see me move in it because that's been the problem of actually seeing this thing be done. Mm -hmm. You show them Jesus. Right. You show them Jesus. That's what he did with his disciples, yeah. even though he taught them. But he, the way he navigated and they watched him, right. they watched him go and leave the masses and go pray and then mm -hmm. come back out and do miracles and have power. And mm -hmm. so I believe that we're in a time where people need to see the navigation Mm -hmm. Right. To go along with all the seed that have been planted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. so I do believe that we're I'm I'm in that time of where God wants to show his full expression among those who don't believe or don't know him like that. Mm -hmm. Right. To see it in action, to see that this can be done. This is doable. 
Right. How do we show that in our everyday lives? How would you tell someone to show I would say, Jesus in their everyday lives? I would say uh, to show yourself and be honest. Mm -hmm. How you do your business dealings. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. what I'm noticing as God is navigating me, um, being mindful to have integrity. You get what I'm that saying? Part. Integrity is, is major because a lot of us, we speak in tongues and everything, but then fall short when it comes to integrity and honesty mm -hmm. and How business dealings and ministry dealings mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So really getting to that place to where people can see you functioning in integrity. Yeah. Yeah. That's one, that's a major way yeah. that I believe is going to really minister because that's going to spark questions. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. going to show, well, there's something different about you yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of craftiness and there's a lot yeah, of yeah. different things that is going on, yeah. right? Yeah, yes. And so to see people navigating in that level of honesty and integrity, it's going to spark questions. They're going to say, it's something different about you because mm -hmm. that's what I get. It's something different about you. Mm -hmm. Mm. You get what I'm saying? They notice something. Yeah. They don't know it's yeah. the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm looking, I'm looking to really exercise that at a greater level. I'm excited about that. Yeah. So the repositioning. Yes. That's great. You, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you also talk about soul work. Uh, Can you, you talk to, to us? You beat me you to it. You talk about yes, soul I work? I was going to say it. I, I, I said I got to know more about the soul work. Tell us about uh, soul work. Well, soul work is what I learned that when I came into the church, a lot of times we come in and we try to get straight to work and put our hands to something. You, you even have people that will come to you, well, I'm called to do this, you know, and how they know that, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... The soul work is what I learned when God brought me in. He didn't allow me to really put my hand to do anything as of yet. I started praying and I was sitting under the word and then God started challenging me about me. Mm. He started challenging my attitude. He started challenging my temperament because of my so background. Inside. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, even the way I would respond to people right? Um, the different things, bitterness, deep-rooted bitterness from my family and upbringing. Mm. Are you hearing me? Uh, the strongholds from my bloodline, yeah. generational curses. All those things started being addressed, and it was really a tough season, but it was so necessary. Yeah. And I believe a lot of people don't understand the process to take the time to not understand that's serving. Mm -hmm. Doing soul work when God is challenging you about you, that's serving because you're serving in the first temple. Yeah. And I talk about that in the book as well. Um, that soul work, a lot of times people are distracted from it because they're ready to put their hand to something, mm -hmm. not knowing that you got to have clean hands to touch what's sacred. Mm. And so the process is necessary yeah. to challenge us about us. If you can make it through that about you, then you can discern other things better. Because okay. I watch people come into the church and they feel like they can discern and they feel like this yeah, one ain't that yeah, and this. Yeah. And you're coming from a place of worldliness, not from a place of being cleaned up mm. until your eyes can see clearly. So let me say this. How can they find you? How can they reach you? Like, so people want to know more. Like, how can they reach you? Um, NatashaOquindo.com is mm -hmm. my website. I'm on social media at I am Natasha Oquindo. On Facebook, I have a podcast yes. called Power to Prosper. Yes. Um, power, the number two, okay. and Prosper. Yes. They can get it on Spotify, on uh, YouTube, and all of those other channels. I'm on all the social media. And you are powerful on those <laughs> as well. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, yes. Lord. Uh, God. To God. <laughs> 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 to God be oh, the yes, glory. Lord. Well, it's I'm been excited. fantastic having you here with us this evening. Yeah. We want to make sure that everybody goes out and supports you and go to your website. And yeah, yes. so like go to the podcast. Make and sure. You get the book on Amazon. Yes. Well, yes. Once yes. Again, invitation to Queendom, Seven Keys to Unlock Your God Given Superpower. Yes. And that power that comes from the Lord. Hey, We're going to hear some powerful worship right now. Yes. And this is Billy Bradley Jr., Heart of Worship with Always.
Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you always. And Father, I need you. Can't do life without you. Father, I need you. That's your testimony tonight. Why don't you help us sing right here? Everybody sing. Father, Father, I trust you. Father, Father, I trust you. Sing, Father, Father, I trust you. Always. Always. Yeah. Come on, say, Father, I need. Come on, say, Father, please heal me. Father, please heal me. Sing, Father. Provision. Father, provide for me. Well, sing, sing, Father. Father, provide for me. When you want him to do it.
Good evening and welcome to the Atlanta Live Prayer Room. Intercessors are here. We're ready to pray with you. Give us a call at 770-300-9828. Romans 10 verses 9 to 10 reads, If you thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you would like to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I know that I am a sinner. I believe Christ has died for my sins. I repent tonight and I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I promise to live for you for the rest of my days. Now, if you prayed that prayer, call us at 770-300-9828. Now we're going back to the studio. Amen. Amen. We know that you all are praying and you're calling into the prayer lines, and we're so glad to have you. Um, we're on Atlanta Live, yes. and you know you just heard that incredible music right before prayer with Billy Bradley Jr. and a heart of worship. And guess who we're going to talk to? I don't know who we're talking to. <laughs> we're talking to Billy Bradley Jr. Hey. Hello. Hey, how are you all? Oh, uh, we're good. How you feeling, good brother? Pretty good. So oh, if they were watching, while they were watching, they saw you on the drums in the back. Yeah. You are the songwriter. You are also a singer yourself, a musician. You're the producer. And this is your group that God has blessed you with. So talk to us about it. Um, I have been blessed to be able to work with some of the most amazing people. Um, God had a divine to put it in there. Um, sometimes you start things and you start it with the people that you believe that are going to fit for what you have. But God always has a plan and he has a way of removing those people so that mm -hmm. he can bring you the right people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in this season, God has brought me the right people that are ready to work. Um, I don't consider them a group. They're family. We're yeah. beyond the music. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. So how long have, like, when did you start the group? Um, so I moved to Orangeburg in 2012. The group wasn't formed until 2014. Okay. Um, and it started off with an open mic. Um, so. Wow. It was a way for me to recruit people. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, hey. So I would go to uh, and host open mics and have different people come in, and they would say, "Okay, well, I want to be a part." So more people came. They didn't know that I was looking at them just like they were looking at me. Right. right. And as as it gained me a whole lot of network with the different people because mm -hmm. I wasn't from the state, so I was able to meet a lot of people, go a lot of places, and um, mm -hmm. it worked on my behalf. Well, God worked on my behalf. Amen. 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 We've been talking about missions all night long with our guests, and we wonder, like, what is the mission that God gave you for your group? Um, biggest thing is not to waste the talent that God's giving you, and don't waste the time that he's giving you as well. Mm. Um, during COVID, we saw so many people lose their lives, yeah. and they had unfinished business. Yeah. And something that I carry on a day-to-day -day basis is that I don't want to have any unfinished business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God gives me 24 hours every day to maximize the talents that he's given me, the people that he has in my circle. And I never want to take that for granted because we can always want to do something and not have the ability or the time to do it. So I'm going to maximize that time. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So you come from a musical family? I do. Um, my father was a drummer, um, sound engineer. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Junior! <laughs> my mother, um, she sung and she played the piano as well. So okay. it, it was always birth. Um, my mom always says that um, she knew I was going to have the gift before I even came out of her womb. So. Mm. so you knew even while you were little that this was going to be what you were going to do? I saw my dad. I saw him do it every Sunday. And mm. he fueled a passion. He still has that passion that fuels me on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. How did you know, though, that you were called to even create this group? Like, did, how did God let you know that this is what you were to do next? And what was happening in your life during that time? Um, during that time, it was a transition. I left um, Charlotte, something I knew, to a place where I had no connections, I had no friends, I had nothing. And I don't consider myself to be a singer. So for me to get up and lead a song and do something, you right. got to know that God had to say something. Because <laughs> if it was up to me, that wouldn't be my choice. But the thing about it is God gives us the opportunity to say yes. Mm -hmm. And that's our choice. Yes, sir. I chose to say yes, and he opened the rest of the doors. Oh, wow. Amen. 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 So let me, uh, so 
what's next? What's so, next? what's next for us? Uh, we recently just released our um, latest single in August called I Just Want You. Okay. Um, you guys have got a preview for the next song, One Love, One God. Oh, yeah, that's wow. a good song yeah, that's coming. That's so, song. And the one before that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you guys get to hear it before it actually goes to, to whack. So, okay, I'm yeah. excited about it. Um, something that we're targeting to do is be more con community driven, get into the nursing homes and get into mm. the. Um, you know, the homeless shelters because of the fact that a lot of times you only see that during like Thanksgiving and Christmas, yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. these people need us throughout the whole year. Yeah. So being active in our community because the church goes beyond the four walls. That's hey, right. Hey, amen. You have some incredible voices with you too. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Like, did you find them at the open mic? Absolutely. Okay, so, I'm just double checking like, wait, wait. But, um, and I like to introduce all of them. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, well, tell yeah. us some well, of so the names. The first one, on to the left in the tan is my fiance, Latoya Brockington. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my right hand, um, beside her is Anna Brown. Uh -huh. Beside her is Shatima Felder. Amen. Beside her is Verona Tucker. Yeah. And on bass, we have Mr. Bruce Jenkins. And on keyboard, our musical director is Joaquin Perry. Oh, Amen. Awesome. They have incredible voices. The music yes. is incredible. Why don't you guys go and sing another song for us here on Atlanta Live? I think I might take you up on that. All right, oh, man. <laughs> So they are going to sing for us again. I'm telling yes. you, they've been blessing us all night yes. long. Yes. Oh, I think I, I think we had a wonderful evening this tonight. Like tonight was filled with a lot of love, yes. understanding, and mission, and mission, and mission. And and I, I think we should like before we pass it off to the, the musical guests, yeah. we should pray for the, yeah. for the people listening. Actually, let's pray about the mission that people have for their lives. If you don't know the mission that God has for your life, your mission, your purpose, I ask you to take time and ask the Lord and pray and ask him, what is the mission that you have for my life? Amen. Meanwhile, we are going to hear this mission and this music and this worship Billy Bradley Jr. Yes. And a heart of worship. Come, Come on, on and bless, bless the Lord. Lord. Anybody love to bless the Lord? <laughs> 